Shalom, party people, and welcome to the 12th C. You've seen me wear it. I've used this thing a lot, uh, but let's do an overview of my plate carrier. All right, so uh, a little bit of housekeeping on this thing. Um, this is a AR500 or Armored Republic. Um, at the time that I bought it, it was uh, called the Veritas system. Uh, they have since changed the name on it about 15 different times. Um, I think currently they're calling this a Testito 2, yeah, Testito Gen 2, um, but you can't buy it in this configuration, which I think is a little dumb, but hey, you know, it is what it is. They're allowed to run their business however they see fit. Um, this is not an endorsement at all of the plates inside or the carrier itself, other than the fact that this thing has held up to my use and abuse. Um, I think there's about a million plate carrier companies out there that all make decent products. Um, and I haven't shot these plates, so I don't even know if they do what they're advertised to do. Uh, they are quite literally training aids for me. A little bit of story time. So um, I bought these plates a little while back when I was convinced that uh, there was something going on in the government and they were going to uh, ban the civilian ownership of body armor above a certain level. Um, this video's purpose is not really to go over the, the different uh, uh, stopping powers of different body armors that are available. Um, but I was just like, oh, hey, they're, you know, they're gonna um, buy, or they're gonna ban us from owning uh, body armor above a certain, above a certain ability. And so I wanna buy this before, you know, they won't even ship it to me anymore. Uh, and this thing literally sat in my closet for a couple years. Um, fast forward to me getting off my butt and doing 75 hard and I'm um, just trying to actually use my stuff. Um, it's like, wait a second. Um, I've got this perfectly good plate carrier over here. and Why am I not working out in it? Um, so now I try, I don't always, but now I try to work out in this thing six days a week. Um, on bad weeks, it's probably four days a week that I'm actually exercising inside of this thing. And on good weeks, it's, you know, a solid six really hard workouts inside of this thing. Um, this has held up very well. Um, it, it looks like what it did the day I bought it. I mean, obviously not the configuration, not the stains that are on it. Um, but the stitching has held up very well. The, um, overall use of the plate carrier, um, has been good. Um, are there things I don't like about it? Of course there are. Um, are there things that, um, that I think they totally should change on this thing? Yeah, but I'm probably not going to buy anything else from Armored Republic or AR500, in all, in all honesty. And that's not because I don't like them as a company or anything. It's just there's companies that I like better. Uh, and if you are in the market for a plate carrier for whatever reason, I highly, highly encourage you to train in it. Whatever that looks like for you, you know, you define that. But I think um, you should work out with your plate carrier on because it will very, very quickly um, cause you to move things around, shift things around. Uh, what you see this in configuration in is, um, I mean, about a year in all honesty of trial and error, figuring out what goes where, what works best for me, what I like, what I don't like. Uh, I used to have shoulder straps on this thing, and I have found that a little bit slicker design um, is what I prefer. Um, I had a tourniquet carrier up here in the spot where there's this uh, nice rust stain um, from the hardware that was there. Um, I have since moved that and switched to tourniquet carriers, not because I didn't like what I had, but I, I needed something with just a little bit more solid retention in the inverted position. Um, you know, and we'll go over this piece by piece, but the just proving my point of use your stuff. You're going to find out really fast if the positioning of something, let alone the actual item that you have, is what you want in that certain spot for whatever. Um, this is not my plate carrier for, you know, bump in the night. This is not my plate carrier for um, the, uh, the government is uh, in need of having the Tree of Liberty refreshed or anything along those lines. This um, this is quite literally workout and LARPing. That's all this plate carrier is for me. Um, is this set up in such a way for, you know, if I was going to go, you know, do the things in it? No, it's not. Um, there's way more patches on here than I think there should be. Um, I think there's just a lot of, uh, oh, hey, I want to throw a patch on this because I'm filming YouTube videos. 
um, I would definitely go a lot more, um, a lot more covert if I was, uh, actually using this for things. So don't think that I'm some crazy gunfighter because I, I have this little one because I have jelly bean storage unit devices on this. Um, it's, it's literally, um, to have weight on this, um, is half the reason why, um, everything in the core of this plate carrier is present. Um, the little boogie, uh, boo-boo kit that is here, um, is here in case, you know, I have a uh, minor medical need. Um, the tourniquet and shears are there in case myself or somebody else has a serious medical need. Um, and you can, you know, utilize some of the things that are in, uh, this, uh, this boogie for that reason. Uh, I've got a little pin light on here and, you know, for what that's worth, I, do I recommend this pen light? No. Um, is it decent? Sure, it's fine. It's a little Energizer one that I switched the uh, the clip around. I, I literally just needed a throwaway flashlight that I don't care what happens to this. Like if I lose it, if I break it, like who cares? Um, and it's it's held up fine. Um, I've changed the batteries on it a few times and it's, it's worked. Um, the little O-ring inside of here uh, doesn't really hold up too well when you try and flip this, uh, this clip around. Um, but, you know, it works fine. It does what I need it to do. Um, I get questions on this all the time. What in the world is this thing that is sticking out? Is that made of wood? Because it, you know, kind of, um, due to the, <laughs> the dirt that is on it, people are like, is it, you got a block of wood stuck in there? Like, no, I don't. Um, this is a, uh, a little shovel that I bought in the garden section of Wally World for, uh, on sale off season for like a dollar. Um, it's, I think, designed for doing seeds or whatnot. And you saw all that dirt that comes out is because I actually use my stuff. Um, people are like, what in the world? Why do you have that? Bro, I've got this for, for one reason, and it is to fulfill the commandment uh, that is given in Deuteronomy 23, 12 through 14. Uh, when you go outside the camp, you're supposed to have a place that you go and do your business, and you dig a hole, and you do your business, and then you cover up that business with your, uh, your dirt that you dug up. And so I need a way to dig a hole in a field expedient emergency when I'm out running and exercising away from the house and I don't have a toilet anywhere nearby and I have got to go. Um, if you do any real long distance running, uh, you will find out really fast that your bowels don't hold on to things as long as you think they do. Um, that's something that, you know, you don't know until you know. And, I can tell you this, there's a lot of you who have never pooped outside and you need to know how to do that um, safely. Um, it's a sanitary thing. You don't just drop it behind a bush and run away. You bury it. Uh, go read Deuteronomy 23, 12 through 14. Um, and Yahweh's actually telling his people that uh, things are not going to go well for them if they don't bury their poo because he walks amongst them in their camp. And if he sees something detestable, he's going to smoke check them. Uh, now, you know, we can debate as to what that verse actually means all the time. But, you know, even if you don't believe, like I believe, um, not burying your poo when you're pooing outside leads to a lot of diseases. So let's just agree on that one. Um, I've got patches on here and, um, you know, the Spicy Snafu sent me that patch. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. Um, it's a Glock patch that I found. Um, Nightfall Optics. I uh, picked that up at the Refuge Ruckus. Uh, the Pedophiles Aren't People patch that I picked up from Just Nazarene Leather Co. at the Ruckus. Uh, great patch. I, I'm pretty sure he's discontinued these, but, you know, if you, you call him and you play really nice, you never know, he might make one for you. Um, refuge patch that, you know, I just acquired over time. Um, little blood type patch, and, you know, there's debate over whether or not the blood type patch is going to do anybody any good in, you know, a um, real world scenario. I would rather have it not need it than need it not have it. Uh, this bad boy that you only get from completing refuge training. Um, and then they're calling this Timmy the tourniquet. I'm rebelling. This is Ernie the tourney, and he will always remain so. Uh, seat seats that I've got attached to. These are the seat seats that I wore um, for refuge training. Uh, I went through the whole class on that. This was the first set that I made for myself. Um, and so I put it on here and these have taken use and abuse, um, and they've held up very well. I really haven't had to do much to them. Um, let's see. Oh, jelly bean holders on here. 
um, yes, they have jelly beans inside. Is this designed for gunfighting? No, it's not, um, but it's there. Um, paint can opener, why? If you know, you know. Um, it's just convenient if you need to reach in somewhere and grab something, uh, but it's there. It barely takes up any weight. Um, as configured, when the uh, when the light and the shovel are on here, um, with the tourniquet, with the med kit, with the jelly beans, with all of that, uh, this this thing sits right around 19.8 pounds, something like that. So rounded up to 20, give or take. Um, I mean, I did take the uh, um, the chest straps, or not the chest straps. I'm sorry, I did take the shoulder straps off of that. So let's call it, you know, 19 and a half pounds. Um, all intents and purposes, it's a 20 pound weight. When I'm exercising with this thing on, I notice a one minute difference in my mile times. Uh, 20 pounds is not nothing. Uh, it's something that, you know, I think most people can handle 20 pounds strapped to their torso, especially really close to their body when it's split front and back and around the sides um, and it's snug and it moves with you appropriately and doesn't move against you. Um, I think most people can handle 20 pounds pretty well. Um, but I, like I said, I have noticed a, a one minute difference in my mile times when I wear this thing versus when I don't wear this thing. So that is something to think of. Um, I could set this up a whole lot of different ways. This originally came with a, uh, um, so this part would be considered your cummerbund. Um, I forget what the technical term is for the, the placard or whatever that um, goes over the front and velcros to the fronts of these that just retains things a lot better um, for my context while I'm working out when I'm rolling around on the ground I have not had this thing come loose on me and I just like it for getting in and out of it a lot easier um, if I were you know setting this up for a different use where I was going to refresh the tree of liberty or whatever um, then I probably would have um, that placard on here just to make life easier. Um, I did slide a, uh, a mag carrier inside the uh, the admin pocket that was on here, or actually I think the admin pocket would be up here, um, the kangaroo pocket that's up here. I did slide a mag carrier um, that goes inside, um, and when you pull all three mags out of here, it just fits really flush. Um, it's just something that I found that I liked a little bit better um, because I did not like how, how far out from the body, the placard with the, the mag carriers attached to it um, came away. It made doing push-ups, uh, I couldn't go down as far. So this was a nice compromise. I could still have the mags on there. And it, why are the mags on here when I'm just working out? Wait, honestly, I just, it was an additional three pounds that I was able to add to this vest that, that made life a lot nicer. Um, you know, if you are in the market for a plate carrier, um, if you are getting ready to purchase something, uh, maybe you're, you're picking up the refuge plate carrier or whatever, don't let it sit. Um, pick up the plate carrier, put it on, work out with it. At minimum, you will find out the, the layout that works the absolute best for you for your needs. You may find that, oh, hey, this piece of equipment that's on here, I don't actually need this. Or right here, it rubs in this way and it's you know, no good for me or, or whatever. Um, the actual use of your stuff you will find out what works for you. A little bit of a inside tour as to what's going on. This cummerbund, um, is it the best thing in the world? No, it's not. Um, it, it works. It's fine. Um, when I'm not wearing a shirt or when my shirt has very low armpit cuts, um, this can get a little chafy. Um, it's just the way that this this particular piece was laser cut. Um, this cummerbund, what I do like about it is it has all the holes in there, so it, it ventilates very well. Um, a lot of other cummerbunds, even if they're mesh, um, they are just very, very hot. Um, this has the ability to have um, some uh, some buckles attached to it if you if you want for whatever reason. Um, it, it this one particularly came with like a strap. Um, that you could clip the, the front and back and it and be like a lot more low profile. I found that that did not work very well for um, hard use. I found that uh, the cummerbund actually worked really, really well hard hard use. But, you know, if someone was just getting in and out of a vehicle and they needed to be like as slick as possible, I see why they would do what they would do. Um, the inside of this um, has the ability to have um, 
uh, pads Velcroed on here to where you could pull this away from the body a little bit further and get some better ventilation, um, you are going to sweat in a plate carrier. Like it's just a fact of life. Um, I have played around with some pads on there and I never found one that I thought was like really comfortable. Um, and then pretty much everything that I've seen um, pretty well, like it still keeps most of it relatively close to your body. And so like I haven't seen a big sweat difference and it kept it further away from my body. So like, it, you know, push-ups, things like that, that, you know, was part of it. Um, I really do like having an admin pocket up here. Um, when I work out a lot of times, I will throw my phone in this pocket. Um, I will uh, put a uh, Ziploc baggie with some uh, baby wipes in there uh, for when I'm, you know, needing to do the do um, or some toilet paper or something along those lines. I find that that is a, uh, a really, really convenient way to carry. Um, it just, it's nice. Um, when you're looking for a plate carrier, I would tell you that having this admin pocket up here is pretty cool. If you can't get an admin pocket in whatever plate carrier you are getting, um, having these straps up here that are Molly, um, you can buy a lot of attachments that will um, be able to phone clip something up there so that at least gives you an ability to do whatever you need to do. Um, a kangaroo pocket is nice. It's not required, but it, it does really slick the plate carrier up. Um, so that's something to be on the lookout for. Um, these buckles back here, these are ABS shatterproof buckles from what I'm told. I, like, who knows if that's really the case or not. They've held up well. They um, Back there, they relatively stay out of the way unless you're putting on a backpack. If you put on a backpack, you will know those are back there. I don't care how good your shoulder straps are, um, how good your shoulder pads are. You will find out that you have a backpack back there. Um, you will find out that those buckles are there if there's a backpack on. So that is of consideration. Um, showing you guys the back real quick before I pull out and show you plates. Um, there's a, uh, a sleeve that this cummerbund goes into and it Velcros in and just holds. Um, that's a pretty standard way to hook things up. I do have these uh, little Blackhawk um, spec clips or whatever that are on here. These are just, I'm storing extras back here in case I ever need them for whatever reason. Um, there is a drag handle on here. I have not tested this drag handle. I don't know how great it actually is. Um, and I can, I can quite literally hear you, Striker Cade. I know you're screaming that I need to have not, like a tubular nylon, a whole, whole heck of a bunch of tubular nylon and weave it through and hook my, uh, my, uh, climbing rated carabiner to the thing. So that way it quick deploys out and someone's not having to drag me by my drag handle that's on there. Cool. I hear you, bro. Like, I might eventually get around to doing that. Um, in all honesty, if I need to drag somebody in a civilian context and they are wearing a plate carrier for whatever reason, I'm probably going to grab underneath their arms and pull them. Um, in a tactical con in a tactical setting, yeah, I totally see the advantages of having, you know, a climbing rated carabiner hooked on there and having tubular nylon so that way you can hook it to your belt and you can drag them away. Like, I, I get it, strike your cake, like you can stop screaming from Tennessee. I hear you. We'll get around to that eventually. Um, it just hasn't been a pressing issue. Um, all in all, on the plates inside, and bear with me, this is going to be fun to do while I'm filming, but... Just so you guys can see them, these plates, like, I haven't shot them. I don't know if they actually work or not. They're weight. That's what I'm doing out here. Are these plates that I would buy again? Probably not. Um, and it's nothing against Air 500. It's just there's other companies who are doing things that I like better. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. These, um, like I said, they're calling them Armored Republic now, which was like a... Uh, um, subsidiary that they had and they just rebranded it you know it is what it is this is the swimmer cut um, i bought the swimmer cut because i wanted a little bit more mobility while wearing the plates um, your standard shooter cut 10 by 12 is is noticeable um, there's information on that they're claiming this is that you know 3a plus or whatever um, the 3a plus is a marketing gimmick um, it's not a real nij certification or whatever but they claim that this stuff will stop green tips um, out of a 16 inch barrel, which let's face it, 55 green out of a 20 inch barrel is going to go right through this thing. Um, it just is what it is. This has some kind of a spall uh, extra build up coat that's on it. Um, these things have held up very well. I've dropped them. Um, they like 
they're decent, but like I said, I've never shot these and I'm never going to shoot these and I hope I never get shot while wearing these. Like I'm allergic to getting shot, I break out in hives. So like I don't wanna find out that these things actually do or don't work. Um, they are dead weight for me in a workout context. Um, would I wear them if I had to wear them? Yeah, you better believe I would, but I, I don't definitively know that these things actually work. Um, so I'm not gonna be one of those YouTubers that tells you like, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, this plate as sits is about five and a half, six pounds with the buildup coat on it. Um, yeah, like 6.2, something like that. Um, so you run both of those on there plus the weight of the carrier, which no one ever considers that. The carrier actually does weigh something. Um, and then all your accoutrements that you put on there um, weighs something. It's there. But Velcro doesn't move on me. It is a good setup. Um, is it the best? I don't know. Probably not. Um, I have a sample size of this one. It's held up very well. Um, you can look at it. The stitching has, I mean, lasted through this thing. So that is something positive that I have to say about this plate carrier. I'm actually impressed with how well this thing's held up. Um, you know, it's sewn in Vietnam, and so I'm glad that it wasn't sewn by some, like, Chinese slave somewhere. Um, would I prefer this thing to be American-made? Yeah. Um, the plate carrier normally retails right around the $200 mark, give or take. Um, and then those plates, as shown, um, I think they're calling them the E2 plates now, or whatever. Those plates, as shown with the extra build-up coat on there, you're going to pay... Um, about 400 bucks for those um, if you buy that from AR500. Um, I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing through Redemption Tactical. So um, if I were to buy a overt plate carrier, um, I might look pretty heavy at Redemption Tactical and their, you know, level four polymer plates. Um, but let's face it, I don't, I don't know if those plates actually work. Um, I've never shot them. I don't intend to shoot them. Um, so I, I just don't know. Um, but I like Redemption Tactical. I think they're pretty cool guys. Um, I would pick them in a heartbeat today over um, the uh, the Armored Republic uh, guys. And it's not that I have anything against the Armored Republic guys. I think they have a really, really funny Instagram page. I love the content that they post. Um, but they are, you know, just a, a nameless, faceless company to me. Um, whereas Redemption Tactical, I think, is making some better stuff. Um, I think they're res they're listening to user feedback a lot better. Um, I am very, very curious about the Refuge plate carrier when that comes out from Refuge, um, which by the time you're seeing this video, that, that may already be shipping. I know that they're taking pre-orders on it. Uh, but this is something that... Uh, I'm just gonna work out in these plates until they rust clean through. I am gonna, you know, use this plate carrier until it breaks and it has it has held up. Um, I have run marathons in this thing. I have uh, rolled around in the sand, rolled around in the mud. Um, I have done a lot of things in this thing. Um, and, you know, you pull the plates out, you pressure wash the thing, and then you leave it out in the sun to dry and it it does what it needs to do. The Velcro has, you know, there's threads that are coming out of it, but it, it has done very well. The the cummerbund for the most part is in decent shape. Um, I, I would say they, uh, they skimped a little on the Velcro of this particular plate carrier. That's probably one of the few negative things I really can say about it. Um, but it's, it's a well-made carrier. So I don't, I don't have anything super negative to say about it. Um, the boo-boo kit that I, or not boo-boo kit, um, this is the the boogie that I have on here. Um, I have it with those Blackhawk clips. Uh, pulls out, I added that shot cord because the rubber bands that originally came with the boogie just snap and it just happens. Um, I have replaced this pad of gauze because it's exposed. And so over time, it eventually is just gonna do its due. I've replaced the gloves in there a few times. Um, I've used band-aids out of this thing. This is just, you know, basic, basic small level first aid boo-boo stuff um, that happens to have a gauze in there. And then um, there is a uh, um, an S-mark bandage that's in there. And I think there's a little bit of duct tape. Um, the the S-mark bandage is, you know, really great if you need a pressure dressing on something. Uh, 
the duct tape will get you through a lot of things. Um, no, it doesn't have chest seals in it. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Like, could I make chest seals if I had to? Yeah, but I'm also like working out in pretty safe neighborhoods. The likelihood of getting shot um, is pretty low, but that doesn't mean that I'm not trail running and run through a tree branch and then now have a puncture through my pleural space. So it like it could happen. Like, could I need a chest seal? Yeah, um, but basic thin line first aid kit that I can keep on my body. I have, you know, trauma and then basic boo-boo stuff and in between, which is there. Um, skills weigh nothing and they go with you everywhere. So is it the most advanced first aid kit that I could carry with me? No, it's not. Um, would it, would I be better served carrying like an SOB or an op fac on here with the dangler? Yeah, I would. This is the configuration that I have this thing in and it works good. Um, this plate carrier works for me. I highly, highly encourage you, if you're going to be buying a plate carrier, do not let that thing get dusty. Let it get filthy while you're wearing it and while you're working out in it. Um, if your gym doesn't let you work out in a plate carrier, you go to the wrong gym. You probably should be working out at home anyway. It'll save you time. Tell me what you think. Tell me what I'm doing wrong with my plate carrier. Tell me what, uh, what you're doing with yours because these things are very very personal and they need to be set up for you let me know down in the comments go do hard things